WJBC, WJBC.com. It is 3.34. I'm T.J. Hart, and we have uh, Professor Nicholas Hartlepp is in the uh, studio with us uh, from uh, Illinois State University. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Um, well, I'm a professor. I teach educational foundations um, to mostly upper graduates, mm-hmm. uh, and they're all, all of my students are um, studying to become teachers. Mm-hmm. You've just written a book, and it's called uh, the uh, uh, the model minority stereotype, and it, fascinating. Just the, briefly, the fast ninety seconds that we had before we went on the air. Uh, let's bring up the uh, bring the audience up to speed about what your book is about and what you're trying to present. So, in the book, I review literature on the model minority stereotype, and the model minority stereotype, if you don't know what it is, is a stereotype that Asians in the United States are doing really well, they're very successful. And it's almost a recycling of Jewish um, stereotypes in the past. And so many times Asians are referred to as the new Jews here in America. Uh, So there's a problem with being identified as being successful and and intelligent? There's a negative to that? Yeah, so that's precisely. You see, all my <laughs> life, I was hoping maybe yeah. I could get somebody to bite on that yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's precisely uh-huh. one um, challenge and obstacle to mm-hmm. dismantling this myth is this idea, right? People say, well, it's positive. Well, one negative uh, uh, consequence of the stereotype is that, right? If you've internalized this stereotype and you are unsuccessful, you might um, have depression. You might actually commit suicide and and there are instances of that occurring. Oh wow. And so there's it's, it's a complex phenomenon to really understand. That is very 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 deep. Um you know with 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 the stereotypes I think we we deal with them um differently today than we did I would say when I was a young man back in the 1960s. Uh, I think they're they're vastly different, but they're still there. And although they might not be at the surface, there's the undercurrent and it's what's not said sometimes. Absolutely. And so actually the model minority stereotype originated in 1966. Mm-hmm. A sociologist at UC Berkeley, William Peterson, he wrote a article in the New York Times magazine in which it really applauded Japanese Americans for doing well here in the United States. One negative consequence of the model minority stereotype is that if Asians are you know, applauded for doing so well, there has to be a contrast, a comparison group. And so one negative outcome or unintended consequence, if you will, of the positive stereotype is that it really pushes down on blacks and Hispanics in this country. I I believe it or not, I see that. Because uh, if you're putting one set of people above another or displacing another set, uh, all of a sudden there, there's that unintended consequence. You think you're paying somebody a compliment, and what, what's really happening? Absolutely. And then it can also lead to comp- uh, competition. So if Asians are perceived to be doing extremely well, mm-hmm. while no longer are they a model minority, they're competition for the mainstream population. Mm-hmm. And so when we talk about admission to high um, uh, at prestigious institutions and colleges, uh, I'm referring to, um, or affirmative action, it leads to um, some problematic um, scenarios. And so one is uh, there there have been articles and studies that have shown that mainstream white Americans, if they perceive Asians to be doing really well, in particular in California, states mm-hmm. that have high concentrations of Asian Americans, mm-hmm. then they are more likely to not support affirmative action. And, and so it's, it's, it's a really, really interesting phenomenon, um, and it has many outcomes that most people would say, hey, it's positive, right? Like you said, mm-hmm. it's positive. What's so wrong with that? And we, we identified some of these. Now, how, how do we go about trying to undo centuries of stereotyping? Well, see, again, that's another reason why it's so hard to uh, to dismantle, because stereotypes in some ways cognitively mm-hmm. um, for our brain um, are functional. And it helps us to um, ascertain and to, to take a, a lot of information and to make some um Observations, right? So mm-hmm. there's right a stereotype as a, a, a little kid. In some ways, it's a stereotype. If you put your hand on a stove, well, and you get burnt. Oh, you learned your lesson. Yeah. Right? So we we have these. They do serve cognitive functions. And how do we um, 
Break uh, them how away. Do we, from how do we people? break away? Well, there's some work. Some people have um, talked about implicit bias that we can reprogram our brains to to unlearn stereotypes. Believe it or not. And it's it's fascinating, right? Um, so I'm I'm trying to think <laughs> of how that could be done. I, my my mind is is, is uh, about how we learn. I've never tried to unlearn. Yeah, the the biggest thing is to be aware, right? Yeah. So when we watch these movies uh, and they have comedy and we laugh, mm-hmm. we we have to self question what what are we laughing about, mm-hmm. right? So stereotypes. Um, to to unlearn it is is to catch yourself to mm-hmm. be reflective mm-hmm. is one thing. So I teach my students to be reflective in the classroom. If you're teaching and you have black students and Asian students in your classroom, don't automatically assume that they are of this grade. Right, that your Asian kids will be high performing and and perhaps your 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 African American or your English language learner students are are not. And so trying to un unlearn or erase what society programs us to, mm-hmm. so movies and media. Okay, uh, so we need to walk into a classroom thinking that everybody's got the same chance, the same opportunity, and uh, let it go at that. And then Yeah, get, get, to know, get to know get to know your people. Get to know your students. <laughs> I wouldn't say that they're all equal, but, but definitely, yeah, get to know people mm-hmm. on the individual level. Not all Asians are the same, just like all whites and all blacks aren't the same. That's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, when I was going to college, we had many people from the Middle East. Uh, it was, this was in the late 70s. And it was um, an interesting dynamic. Uh, the the fellows from the Middle East weren't talking to the Caucasians or the Asians or, or the blacks very much. They were very, very quiet, and uh, I, I don't know what that was all about. But uh, we did have a class where we had a fellow who was a little bit of a comedian, mm-hmm. and it turned out one of the fellows uh, who was uh, with the, uh, the the fellows from the Middle East was just as funny as he was, and it turned out to be pretty good because it, it got everybody talking. Mm-hmm. And the, the next thing you know, uh, what used to be a very divided room and a very quiet room became a very friendly coming together. And I, I you know, just as a 19 year old college student, I thought that was uh, something that doesn't happen very often or often enough. Absolutely. So there's a lot of um, work being written about Asian Americans. And they, they call it the creative class, mm-hmm. that they're not all just studious nerds or brainiacs, but rather, right, they're artists, there's musicians, they're comedians. And 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 certainly Jeremy Lin as a basketball player, I mean, he's treated as a model minority, but certainly there's athletes. So Asian Americans are are uh, multidimensional. Yeah, just like everybody. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we, we have to, to relearn it. Now, is your book available uh, on Amazon? Yes, it is. It's uh, available on Amazon. If you uh, go to Amazon and search the model minority stereotype, demystifying Asian American success, mm-hmm. or, or search Nicholas Hartlip, you should be able to find it. All right. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, very nice to get a, an insight there. And uh, we learn something new every day. Yeah, thank right. you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Appreciate it. We've got more coming up right here on WJBC and WJBC.com.